Welcome everyone, my name is Stephanie Shurakorn. I am active at BMW within the networking department specialized for 10 based T1S. Over the years, 10 based T1S became a more and more important topic within our community and its technical aspect has been already at several occasions presented. At BMW, we have been also very busy for the rolling out of this new technology. And that's why today I came up to share uh, our experience in the seri production preparation. As I mentioned, there is already a lot of available material for the technical details. That's why our focus today will remain on our experience uh, for the software integration as well as the tool adaptation. With the evolution of advanced features in the car, we observe the constant growth of our communication needs. Our network is composed of diverse technologies coexisting through switches or gateways, and the biggest part of these communications are legacy bus under 10 megabits. Although Ethernet uh, is older than this legacy bus, um, it has been brought last uh, in our communication panel to increase the bandwidth. But Ethernet is not only increasing the bandwidth, it's also bringing up others' uh, mechanisms from the IT and also enabling us to design software-oriented architecture. Based on this fact, 10 based T1S became a logical choice in order to unify our network, reduce costs, and also bring the Ethernet to the edge. So the question we asked ourselves was, what do we need to consider if we want to bring 10 based T1S in series? To answer that question, we will first recap the necessary notion to assimilate in order to follow our approach. Then we will see how it will be supported in the software. We will also talk about the development workflow, how it is affected. After that, we will also review the adaptation required for the network design the validation and testing. And at the end, we will also talk about further features that have been considered. 10 based T1S is a new Ethernet technology for 10 megabits. The main innovation is uh, on the physical layer with PLCA. This is a new media access method for half duplex. It allows us to build up bus topologies, also called drop nodes, within the Ethernet network. The transmission is cyclic and the resynchronization goes over a beacon. All the participants are granted sequentially a transmit opportunity within the cycle to send one Ethernet frame. The bandwidth can be also optimized in a way that the next if a transmit opportunity is not used, the next node in the line can transmit earlier. When we talk about PLCA, we have to consider two main entities, which are the drop nodes and the coordinator responsible for transmitting the beacon. The role of the drop nodes, as well as the turn of each drop node within the cycle, is defined by the node ID. This node ID needs to remain unique in order to avoid collision. The coordinator also needs to be aware of how many drop nodes are connected. In fact, if uh, drop nodes are out of this range, we cannot ensure their possibility to transmit. We can also grant uh, more bandwidth to a node by letting him transmitting more than one Ethernet frame in a transmit opportunity. And this is being done through the PLCA burst configuration. When we talk about uh, 10 base T1S, we are also having three different types of hardware. The first type defined by the IEEE is the classical types of Ethernet file that we are actually already using. It's interface by MII uh, interface. The PLCA is encapsulated within the file and remain completely transparent to the Mac controller, although it needs to support half duplex. The two other uh, types are specified by the Open Alliance. The MacFi offers for low-cost microcontroller an internet interface over SPI. The TC6 has also specified a specific protocol for transmitting Ethernet frame over the SPI. And the last type of solution we have is another approach where the PLCA algorithm is completely integrated in the hardware at the MAC uh, level. 
it allows us to connect a three pin transceiver. Now we know that there are three types of hardware for 10 base T1S, and we have learned the importance of the PSCI configuration in order to avoid collisions. So now let's see what needs to be adapted in order to support this in the software. With 10 megabits, the potential candidates are most likely uh, AutoZar Classic platform users. That's why we focus our impact analysis on the software from this specification. The good news is that Ethernet is already supported by AutoZar, and that's why we don't need to change the specification from the layer 2. However, the PLCA parameters need to be introduced, and we have to consider separately the two first hardware uh, solutions. For the MII Phi, the software interface are already defined, and as we can see on this picture, the configuration is localized at the transceiver driver for the PLCA configuration, and the Ethernet controller driver for using the PLCA. The support is already available since last AutoZar release. Regarding the MAC file, the previous modifications are still applicable. However, the externalization of the MAC controller together with the SPI interface is a new concept within the Ethernet stack. The adaptation uh, will be prepared analog to the existing CAN controller extern. The software specification of the Ethernet controller will remain applicable, but consider from another perspective in the hardware abstraction layer, since it is not longer part of the microcontroller. An optional extension to the interface of the SPI module will be added, and the Ethernet frame processing specified by the TC6 will be encapsulated, such as a library to maintain an identical flow with the upper layers. Those additional specifications will be hopefully available in the next release. Ensuring the support in the software is one part, but where this configuration will take place, which actor of the development are impacted, and how this information will be distributed. So this is a very simplified and high-level representation of the development workflow. The network design of the whole system is done at the OEM through one or several databases. The system and the configuration information are exported in a standardized format. This is called the ECU extract or system extract and pass over to the supplier. This input will be incorporated to their implementation via configuration tools compliant to the standard format. The same inputs are also used for validation and testing. So logically, the PSCI configuration will be done within these databases. It means that it needs to be uh, reflected also in the extract and the toolchain used to import the file we have to support it. This exchange format is standardized by AutoZar, and most of the database or toolchain are based on the AutoZar schema. Since the configuration is already supported in AutoZar, the adaptation is uh, in our workflow minimal. Let's have a closer look at our network design and the consequences of the communication configuration. At the des design phase, we can consider two levels, the service and functional communication that can be also reused. The other aspect is the logical topology, how the issues in the system are connected. Until now, our databases are used to support only point-to-point -point or switch connection, and non autosar toolchains need to be updated. Here is an example of how Tozar is foreseeing the multi-drop topologies. The ECU coupling port has a new physical layer type available, which is the 10 base T1S. This coupling port, which is proper to the ECUs, allows to configure the PLCA parameters such as node ID or PLCA burst. The coupling connection associated to this coupling port holds the common subnet information such as the numbers of nodes. For the topology de design, it is also mandatory to consider compatibility between different speed grades and hardware to avoid wrong connections. Another important part of the development is the validation and the testing. So what needs to be prepared? As previously mentioned, the validation and testing relies a lot on tool chains and equipment. So first step is to identify all the relevant parts for the preparation. 
Second is to analyze how the system will be tested. There are different approaches, in fact. Either we can uh, try to access our system through a switch or directly connect to the multi-drop. In that case, only 10 base D1S file can be used because of the physical difference that leads us to a hardware incompatibility. Once we identify our needs, we need to address them to the tool vendors and discuss about their feasibility. The PLCR properties needs to be imported in the toolchain, of course, but other concerns such as in the simulation needs to be taken in account. How many drop nodes could we simulate taking if we consider that one node ID is respect to one file? We also need to reconfigure our equipment or materials if we want to change the system under test. So in fact, all those adaptations are an ongoing activity that has been uh, addressed already and needs to be implemented at the tool vendors. When we introduce a new technology and ensure its operability, there is a few other topics that need to be considered. Regarding diagnostic, obviously diagnostic from the Mac layer will be identical. However, because of the different topology, physical issue detections has to be treated differently. Time sync is another feature used in the Ethernet communication that can be combined with 10 base T1S without the PDLA measurement that enabled us to reach a 1 millisecond accuracy. Due to the multi drop nature, this PDLA measurement is not yet specified, but ongoing activities are working on adapting it. For the security aspect, IPsec is now also available and provides a higher level security than SecoC. Interesting coming up features are also being specified under the Open Alliance for 10 base T1S. For instance, wake up sleep to switch from low power modes to operating modes in a function if a function is required, or going back to sleep modes if not needed. This allows us to save energy, but also wire and decrease the costs. There are still open question how it will be compatible with the current um, wake up concept that at the switching element. Nevertheless, this remains a very attractive feature. Topology discovery has the particularity to enable a kind of PLCA auto negotiation at the startup and provide an easy maintenance at the system. As a conclusion, we can say that the three hardware solution will be available for the targeted uh, SARI production. Most importantly, 10 base T1S is already supported by all automotive relevant standards. Our development workflow will be also easily adapted thanks to the activity led in AutoSAR. As for now, the technology is also mature for a sample. And upcoming features such as wake up sleep or topology discovery are really looking promising and we cannot wait to adapt it to our system. Thank you for your attention.